Today is Monday, December 11th, 2023, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. Today, uh, we talk a little bit about the political recap from over the weekend. Alex Jones is back on Twitter, did a big interview with Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk, and I got to see the uh, video game <laughs> he put out. Anyways, we quickly get on to more religious topics. I thought Clubhouse was going to be back and better and fixed. It was wrong, so maybe I'm going to take a hiatus or something. Anyway, um, so we start out with a guy saying the Holy Spirit woke him up in the night, gave him a dream of GPS coordinates. Turns out they're not GPS coordinates. And then uh, we're trying to parse through that and, you know, gently hold his hand and walk him through some uh, correct doctrine. Uh, and then he claims to be reincarnated Jesus. So we're like, all right, well, we can't really go any further than that, down that road. <laughs> so then he gets all mad and, you know, says we're bad people. Like, well, sorry, you know, you're not Jesus. Um, Then we talk about evolution. Someone had a question with radiometric dating, so Chris and this other guy talk a while. And then we get a Muslim guy that comes in and asks some questions, swears up and down that Bathsheba, remember that, David and Bathsheba? She was eight when she gave birth to Solomon. Or six. Uh, Anyway, so it's just a... (laughs) If you want to listen to it, it's pretty entertaining. But there's not a lot of deep spiritual value that comes out of today. So dude thinks he's Jesus. He's not. Another dude thinks Bathsheba was six or eight. Uh, she was neither. Um, anyway, so have fun, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe I'm just going to take a break until after the new year. All right. Bye. So in other news over the weekend, I noticed that uh, <laughs> um, Tucker Carlson had Alex Jones in like a two-hour interview, and I watched it streaming on some guy's Rumble channel, and after that... He, uh, he downloaded the Alex Jones video game and played it, so I don't have to buy it now. I get to see it. It's pretty funny. I may buy it anyways. Um, apparently, they're going to update like, more and more levels and stuff. And then there's like a big Elon Musk interview with like <clears throat> Jones, Ramaswamy, um, General Flynn, like some other people. And uh, AJ is back on Twitter now. So that's going to make a lot of people crazy, which is going to make me laugh a lot. Get ready for the memes. Oh, yeah. This holiday season's been great. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Christmas. It's a good cur- <laughs> Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. Were you going to say Christmas? <laughs> Christmas. I, don't know, I, think I, I think I get choked up, but yeah, Christmas, idolatries. Idolatries. And then yeah, I posted like the, the, the most. Thing, man. <laughs> I'm still buzzing over it. That thing was great. The yeah, well, I just posted the great. most epic dark christmas carols it was hilarious it's like this gothic chick like all like Whoa! but she's like singing like like frosty the snowman and like rudolph the red nosed reindeer all like dressed in like black with like weird gothic stuff it's hilarious it's like, so wait frosty so did steph get a new youtube channel or <laughs> steph got a new youtube channel maybe it'd be like dark painting with steph Good morning, Steph. Spirit painting with Steph. <laughs> we'll just take a little bit of Frosty's melted body, use that, mix all that, mix that in with some spirits, fry it up in the pan. Hey, Steph, you want to explain to him what Mummy Brown is? Huh. I guess not. M- Mummy Brown. All we're getting is like. A, a, <laughs> which I guess you can't talk because this is like, this is like cool art history stuff. So right around I don't know the 1700s, 1800s, um, they started making a brown paint, an oil paint, out of crushed up mummies because there were so many mummies in Egypt. They decided that they were good to make paint out of them. <laughs> And so oh, wow. there's a whole bunch of classic paintings that have, like, literally crushed up dead people as the paint. Wasn't that how, like, artists would also, like, make paintings, like, using real blood and stuff? No, uh, the Mummy Brown had to do... I thought you said Mommy Brown, and I was thinking, like, what... Okay, the Mummy Brown had to do... <laughs> like, what on earth are you Mommy talking Brown, about? Gross. Yeah, I did not understand... It had to do with the, um, and I can't talk a whole lot. My kids aren't out the door quite yet, but 
the so it had to do with the archivalness so people would notice like you could make a brown out of tea for example right but it won't stay brown it turns yellow it changes with time it fades away so what they were finding was that there if you used certain dusts like charcoal or you know mummy dust which with whatever chemicals they were putting in it it became archival which means the color won't change over time they also made one that i still use to this day out of cow urine but it has to be the urine from cows that have been fed only mango leaves it's incredibly expensive art people are so weird And then she has the cows that she gets the uh, milk from that uh, don't have any hormones or pasteurization and then sells that raw milk out of the back of a van uh, <laughs> down by the creek. Come get my illegal milk, children. Well, I have high hopes for today. So, you know, oh, after I left uh, Friday, did, did more and more new people like find the place or was that just a fluke? No, we had quite a few people. We we had Jeff. Like new people who like found that, who like uh, wandered in and found us, or like new people that you already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Like but I think movie. it's because Rogelio was here. That guy has a gajillion. Like when he came uh, in, I think a bunch of people were able to see the room. Well, can we just make him be here every day? <laughs> Probably. You ask him to, he'll show up. Yeah, we had Jeff insisting that. Uh, this is great. He opens with, do you think that the Bible should be taught in public schools? And then it just went downhill from there. And I was just like, and I was like, uh, well, I mean, what's your grounding and for your morality? And then, uh, he was like, it's whatever society says that it was like catnip. Like everybody's like, Ooh. And it's like, <laughs> Steph just wrecked him. It was, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Hey, serendipity. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, by the way, we do need to do a little bit of um, discipline with uh, Dippity. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but she commits blasphemy against the peanut butter and makes peanut oh butter mayonnaise and oh. banana sandwiches. Oh, that's gross. Peanut butter, mayonnaise, and banana sandwiches. And I and I think we might need to cast a demon out it's of her, or at least so a peanut butter. Good. Leave my peanut butter, banana, banana, and mayo alone. What is the demon? Is the peanut butter demon? <laughs> mayo and peanut butter. I feel Man, like you have the spirit of peanut butter mm. deep in your soul. The spirit of peanut butter compels you to put nasty things on top of it. It compels you to use well, the mean, mango Well, I mean, it death. is peanut butter, okay? Peanut I butter started the room for this. Nasty. I know. Sorry. Chris is fine. <laughs> and Chris, fault. you promised me you were going to try it. <laughs> Ew. You're going to try so it, Chris? Son... Do, do it. Do a video of you trying well, peanut butter right. and mayo. I did tell her I would try it, so I will try it. Um, so I have, I happen to have everything. At, I, although I try it on camera. Do a video. To peanuts. So do okay. Um, but my son made a beef Wellington yesterday. Um, I helped him, and that is that was impressive, man. That kid made this like, I'll put a I'll put a PTR up of the the actual product. He did a great job. Well, then. What's up, Frank? Feel free to join us if you have anything you'd like to say or ask. Because right now, peanut look at butter that. Look and at mayo. That. Yeah, this is way better than peanut butter and mayo and banana. This was a beef wellington my son made. Ooh, that looks pretty good. What, what was the sauce that goes on that? So we made a, a red wine reduction sauce out of uh, beef stock, red wine, shallots, garlic, um, and mushrooms. And so he actually made the reduction, and he made the he actually made the duck cells, which are the filling that go inside of the between the crust and the meat on the 
Wellington. So he he did all of that. Like he did a great job. He he cooked the duck cells correctly. Like he did. It. He, I was impressed. The the child got some chops. Did he follow a recipe? Well, of course. This is like a very complex dish. Yes, that you have to follow a recipe. I have a question, not a Christian one, but I um, I got from the Holy Spirit a GPS coordinate, and I don't have any programs or apps, so I can check it. But uh, the, the GPS is 341 and 56. So if someone could check that out and say to me where it is. You got that, Chris? Three, four, one. I'm, dri- I'm driving right now, so. Better yet, just drive there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, not you, Chris. It's most likely in the middle yeah. of an ocean. Middle of an ocean. God bless. Hey, yeah, I, I, uh, I actually it. don't know how. Can you do it with Google Maps, like reverse put in coordinates? How do you, does anyone know how yeah, to do that? Yeah, you can totally just type in coordinates into Google Maps. <laughs> oh, Okay, hey, hang on. Chris. Let me let me do that real quick. Yeah, but that's not hey. that's not a GPS coordinate. You're gonna not be able to. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it sounds like it's not a full coordinate. It's... Yep. Hey Dutch, what's up? Hey, yeah. So I'm not sure if these guys were talking about something. I'll just wait until they're done. So. Uh, yeah, Magnus. I don't know. Um, yeah, that doesn't sound like a full coordinate. So I don't think we're gonna be able to type that in anywhere. So it's it's not it's not longitude and latitude. It is GPS three four one five six. Okay, hang on. Let's see what happens. All right, Google Maps. All right, here we go. I think right. Google Maps. What, what, what did you map. say? What's the numbers? Three hundred and forty one. Three four one. And five six. No points or anything. Okay. Did you say no, 34156? It's, it's, it's two numbers. It's two numbers. It's GPS coordinate. So 341 space, right? And then what's the uh, other numbers? I don't think you got to put a comma. You got to put a comma between. Okay, comma. Okay, so 341, what after that? 56. Just five six three four one dot five or comma five six. Yeah, the uh, Holy Spirit told me that, and 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 uh, added that you might need to use Wi-Fi at that place. Okay, well, this goes to a place called Hylia, uh, which seems to be a suburb of Miami, Florida. <clears throat> okay. So there you go. It's uh right by Seems Miami. Like oh, place. you should move there. It's by let's see, it's by a shell station, a gas station, a Walgreens, and it's by Emilia Park. And it's close to the Miami Upalaka Executive Airport. Well, that's what it says. Okay. But is it GPS or not? I mean, that, I typed in those numbers and it took us there, so I guess it's yeah, that's something. It. That's it. There you go, man. You got to move to Hialeah, Florida. Here's your answer. You gotta, okay. I'm sure you can I won't move to uh, next to the Shell station. I won't yeah. move to America though. If, uh, America's like a third. Oh wait, country. hang on. Okay. Oh, I mean, just in general. Uh, no. So okay, it's not. No, I don't know what the actual coordinates of that place is, <clears throat> but it went to 341 East 56th Street. So, no, not coordinates. And I actually don't know how to get the coordinates of that place. Like, I tried clicking on it. So if there's a way to actually get what... Anyways, but that's that's not what you were wanting. Those aren't coordinates. But I'll that's the street. Back. You should look on the internet. Oh, no, I'm well, when I this. put in three four, he when I put in three four one five six into the Apple Maps, it lands at Public School fifty six Norwood Heights in the Bronx. 
But again, because oh, the go. address is 341, like it, it's just trying to pull an address. But that's the first one that came up. God is oh, so because to be the custodian oh. at the yeah, it's just assuming the address. One. So that yeah, pulled up the three four. So that pulled up the street. So that pulled up the streets in, in New York for you because that's like the closest one, and for me in Miami because exactly. that's the closest yeah. one. Yeah. I think okay, Dutch. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna Google it. So I'll be back. I'm gonna search around a bit. Okay. Uh, Dutch, what's up, man? Sounds just like, he sounds just like Terminator. I'll be back. All right, so Chris R. Um, by the way, is the floor clear? Can I ask? Yeah. Something? Yep. So Chris R. Are you the same, uh, Chris R. With the with the vendor avatar or the head of vendor avatar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So I saw this clip on my favorite, like this voice clip where this person was, oh, you Calvinist, uh, have a recording of you you guys using the N word and stuff, right? And you said, okay, post the evidence, no worries, I'll wait. <laughs> that, was, that was so funny. But so he makes a point as in, look, if some people did that, well, it doesn't help your case, he's correct. But also, what point is he making? It seems to be a ad hominem, right? So uh, to infer that even if some uh, Calvinists were to use the N-word as if Calvinism is false, that also doesn't follow, it, you know what I mean? Well... To his credit, Big G is not the deepest thinker, so we'll just go with that. All right. Wow, is that is the fun really you were talking rude about over the weekend? and inaccurate about that about him. That's awful. All the Calvinists have pinged him, pinned him as like an idiot, and that's pretty well, ugly. No one said you know, he's an idiot. I just said he's not a deep thinker. There is well, uh, no respecter of persons to God, and neither should we have respecters of persons. This seems to be coming up a lot lately. You don't get to be better or more admired by the Holy Spirit because you're smart. Because I'm not. I'm not smart. I want to be, but I can't be. I just don't have the brain for it. So you think that God's going to shortchange me? He's going to balance it out. And you're not going to be able to have what you need if you don't include me. That's the way it works. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Nate. What? Closet, um, your closet <laughs> Calvinist. Oh boy, I, I don't read near as much, near as many theology books as it would take to be that. I think I said light Calvinist. Okay, Wiccan. Just kidding. Sorry, I got a call. What happened? What? Nothing. He said okay, Wiccan. You said welcome. that? Thank yes, you, Serendipity. <laughs> She's snitching because girls got to stick together. All right. I thought they just wanted to have fun. Fun. Girls smell. Oh my gosh, I was picking up my kid and like um, one of their friends from gymnastics um, a while ago. And oh, it was like death. Like they got in the car. I'm like, oh, what is that? <laughs> and like my, my parents were visiting. So my mom was like riding too to like, you know, like wish them like a, a good practice and all that stuff or, you know, surprise them when we picked them up. And she just gives me this look like, what is that smell? I'm like, you know, trying to be all polite and stuff, and I just couldn't handle it. It's like, oh, that is disgusting. I'm like, who didn't wash their feet? I'm like, you people are gross. It's like, you can't say that. I'm like, it's disgusting. I, I don't know where that. You sound applies. just like Paul Washer. When he's talking about sin? Yeah, yeah so I'm talking about you. Well, if, if there's no topic, I actually last uh, six months I've been studying evolution. So there's this Dutch reformed uh, scholar called Thijsberg van der Brink. He wrote uh, the reform, uh, so evolution and um, the reformation or something like that. And then uh, I also read William Lane Craig, 
the, histor uh, the historical quest, oh, no, sorry, the quest for the historical Adam, kind of watched a ton of debates by, I don't know, young creationists on the Gutsick Gibbon uh, channel, and I was wondering, where do you guys stand with evolution? Do you think it's compatible or not? I mean, you can really stretch it to be compatible-ish, like, as long as you end up that, you know, God created the first humans, or, you know, all humans came from God creating Adam and Eve, and they have a literal, you know, they're literal people with a soul. Like, you can kind of, yeah. as long as you have that, you can really kind of twist and bend and thread that needle to where you can be like, well, sure, sort of, okay, but, eh. Yeah, so I think William Link Rick, um wants to posit... Um, if the historical Adam and Eve, you know, um, at, the, at somewhere around Neanderthals, where they would be at the beginning, like a founding pair of all, of all humans, right? And I think Swami does even has a model where it could be as recent as 6,000 years old, and they were created de nova, right? Where they were created as the first human beings. Uh, but both accounts have, have some issues. But yeah, technically, it could, it could work, yeah. But you have to make some revisions, I guess. Man, I was really hopeful that Clubhouse had fixed their stuff and people were going to be able to find us and have the conversations we're used to. But do you yeah, think the, um, it's compelling, like the radio? So um, the combination of the fossil fuels, like the links in combination with uh, radio metric dating, or like a, I should say the genetic evidence and stuff like just, you know like that's very compelling to me so i think it's it's compatible in the end to having read that stuff but i'm not sure because i got a lot of slack from some reformed fundamental christians that are my buddies who are like no this is the road to this and that slippery slope be careful but i just want to figure out what, what most likely is the case or not it seems very compelling to be honest oh. Well, I mean, you know, things can be compelling and be true or false. So, I mean, no one was there. You know, we've never seen the things they say happened over time millions of years ago um, when anyone has been alive. So, you know, just because they can say, well, look, we found this and we found this. Like the H.A. Aliens guy, like, you know, if you didn't know anything about history or the pyramids or anything like that, he makes a compelling case why aliens built the pyramids. <laughs> but we have the benefit of, you know, knowing a thing or two about the pyramids. Um, but if you didn't, he makes a compelling case that aliens built the pyramids. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, but that's false, and they did not. So same thing. I mean, you, you can make a compelling case for, like, you know, radiometric dating or, you know, the, I don't know, RNA half-life sure. stuff of species. But, I mean, it doesn't make it true. It just makes it compelling. Yeah, sure. Like, it's induction. So by its very nature, it's, it's never certainty. So it's more likely than not, basically, So or, or not. Right, or not. Like, I have a friend who's a mathematician with an actual PhD in applied mathematics. Um, he's also a Christian, and he mocks people who believe in radiometric dating. He just mocks them. He just, he thinks it's hilarious. Because their math is so bad and so sloppy that underpins the discipline that he just mocks them openly. Well, he's just okay, like, so nothing you say is fact. It's just complete conjecture, and you're full of idiocy and nonsense. He's right, like, why so don't you guys take a couple of math classes? So I think, so I'm not, not an expert in the field, I'm a lay person, right, but what I've gathered, so I've wanted to watch a ton of like this, these gut sick, Erica, or her, her channel name, the gut sick given videos where she often like, she, she, she's um, uh, responding to you know, Ken Ham and training Genesis, but also extending the truth, Donnie, you know what I mean, and um, like she would say probably as in, well, Look at uh, the fossil fuel industry, like it's so accurate, it's based on that, so um, so there is something to it, the math must be accurate, blah, blah, blah. So I would love to see your math friend, PhD, on um, engage with uh, Erica, to be honest. So. Well, the, the thing is, he's not going to waste his time because every single one of them to a person, when they're honest, they have to admit that their math is nonsense. And they do, openly. They just don't tell it to everybody else because they're dishonest. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to take your word for that, I guess.
Well, I guess. Yep. Most people in academia are incredibly dishonest. I mean, definitely there are like bribes or like um, money given to certain projects. So there, whenever wicked fallen people are involved, there's going to be uh, some shady stuff going on because scientists are human beings. But in the end of the day, I think the empirical data brings forth the facts to the surface. Um, I think in the end. So I think a Christian, ironically, as the only worldview that could be a scientific realist, right? In philosophy of science, I'm not sure if you guys are aware. So I think Christians should be scientific realists. I, I don't think atheists have a worldview that, that can support um, all their assumptions. Like even, even basic stuff like the external world is real and we, uh, science is tracking facts out there. You know what I mean? But I, th I think Christians can and should be, right? So I think the book of nature is a revelation of God and we should not be scared by true beliefs. So. I mean, the what the trope, like the quote is always like, well, you guys use your cell phone, you go to the doctor, right, if, uh, if something is wrong. So you cannot be selective, uh, selective shopper, you either embrace scientific realism or not, or you have to, or you need some type of cons social construct view or pragmatic uh, view of truth and science, which I don't think, I think a Christian shouldn't shouldn't hold to those views because we believe in objective truth, right? And so, uh, yeah. Right, so, but yeah. here's the whole, the whole problem is that there is scientists that do science and there are scientists that worship scientism. Oh, so, 100%. You are so, that yeah. is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. You are, so naturalism is uh, trash. It's a bankrupt worldview, right? And so Darwinism or scientism that is absolutely trash. It's on its way out, I believe, as a worldview. Uh, I think arguments for, um, you know, for intentionality, mental states, and substance dualism are just absolutely kicking the butt of those people. If you really want to have, see a good debate, watch William Lane Craig versus uh, Alex Rosenberg. Like, it's really brutal because he destroys this guy with his own book. <laughs> like it's unbelievable. That's a really good debate to watch. Why naturalism and scientism is absolutely trash from from every point of view. So yeah. Oh, that person yeah. is back w w with the with the GPS. So I'll, I'll shut up. Oh, yeah, go ahead. How did your GPS uh, foray go? It was a wild goose chase. I uh, I found a lot of GPS equipment. But no, it wasn't the Google said, you know, they, they usually it is a small window that says everything. And then you get all the results. But now it was in that space. There was a, a area where it said shopping instead. So I, I didn't get any results at the Google search. So, yeah, so I, I would probably I, I say the, the best thing to do is to realize that the Holy Spirit doesn't do things like give out GPS coordinates. Just well, it does. does. For me, it does. But you just said it didn't. The, I, I can't, I can't, I'm not responsible for, the, for this equipment or my phone. There should be uh, equipment on the internet to evaluate GPS coordinates. It's a map system. Oh, Lord. Okay. Hang on. I, I, I'm not an expert in GPS, but let me ask someone who is. <clears throat> Let's see. According uh, to Chris's arse friend, your, your map is probably trash. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Yeah, Dr. Adams is actually really funny. Um, he became a Christian um my wife's best friend uh brought him to the lord um she was um a student of his and he was his her uh calculus um tutor um back in college and so they're great people 
but yeah, Dr. Adams, he finished his PhD at Stetson. He taught at Stetson for many years. Um, and he would, he would just, he would think it was hilarious to go down to the, the biology department and just troll people on carbon dating. And then he'd start doing the math and they would just fold. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Is there any, um, recording of it or like just a, like a, it's, it's like how do you call this in english uh, how do you say this um a guilty pleasure that he didn't record yeah i mean this was years ago i mean oh, okay. you know probably 20 years ago i mean it's just but he because <laughs> like i don't know if you ever there's a, a web comic called xkcd and it's about math and all kinds of, you know no, the physicists so so basically like in academia like the physicists are kind of seen as like the stupid ch- stepchildren of mathematicians because they're just they're really really bad at math uh, according to the mathematicians and so they just they just make fun of them they constantly troll physicists for being like horrible at math. Okay. So if he's a Christian and he believes he has some type of knockdown um argument via math to carbon dating or uh, I mean to um, radio metric dating he pro- and he, if he thinks it's very important in terms of you know like reshooting lies that might harm what Christian believes he knows then he might he might want to make some work out of it instead of just struggling to be honest I mean there's already tons of work out there he doesn't need to re- recreate it I mean you can just go look at the math of radio carbon dating the problem is assumptions okay so the the base assumption of radiometric or radio carbon I'm sorry radiometric dating is that the amount of lead and the amount of uranium in the crust um, of the earth's crust uh, this is what they call the heat problem of the universe the assumption they make is that the entire earth's crust was made up of uranium not the whole earth's crust but the the amount of uranium um, in the earth's crust was say just for argument's sake 100 tons I know it's way more than that, but let's just say for, for argument's sake, 100 tons. And then yeah. the radio half-life means that the – the radiometric half-life means that the uranium turned to lead over the course of 6 billion years. And so the amount of lead that we have in the crust would be, you know, how long the Earth – how old the Earth is. Well, it's a – stupid argument because you're assuming you're just making an assumption and i talked to a phd in this and he had never even thought about his assumption and so and i had never even heard this argument and i just went right back to it and i was like well philosophically aren't you making an assumption that god did not the assumption is that there was all uranium and no lead and so the amount of lead tells us how old the earth is and i said or god created the world with both uranium and lead in the crust that's my mm. assumption. Can you just de- can you debate me on that assumption? He's like, well, no, it's an assumption. And I'm like, uh, so you're just making crap up, and you're trying to <laughs> impugn Christians by saying you've got this heat problem, you know, the heat problem of the Earth. And I'm like, yeah, I have no problem. You're the problem is that you're an idiot. And he was like, well, I wouldn't say. That. Okay, yeah. Well, speaking of making crap up, let's rubber back rubber band back to the other one. So, for the most basic navigation, you would need three decimal places uh, for latitude and four for longitude, um, and that would get you to approximately 364 feet. Uh, that's 111 meters of the target. Um, so that would look something like 50, uh, 51.5073 uh, and uh, 0.1275 is how that would look for example so roughly one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven uh, about eleven total numbers uh, that's that's combining latitude and longitude so five digits will just not get anywhere unfortunately have we all learned something today yeah so um not to be difficult, Chris, because I just want to go where truth leads, right? And I'm not an expert in the field at all, so I'm just going to, you know, um, yeah. I'm just going to take what you say. You're a Christian, right? So I'm, I believe that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take your word for it, right? But how would you respond then to, like, the one, the always the one line of the retort that they come back with, like, uh, at least guts a given when, when they say, well, um, the radiometric... Uh, dating 
uh, tool or system is used, right, to find fossil or fossil fuel, or right? like the whole uh, the stuff that you put in your car and where did I find it? Um, it's very accurate. It works, and it's based on those those assumptions, right? Or like um, um, the math or the whatever tool they use. So, a long story short, um, it works, and it is also um, what is the word? What is the word? Uh, confirmed by the fossil fuel industry. What, right. What That's that? just a red herring because it's a category error. That has nothing to do with the age of the Earth. The calculations they're using is simply depth calculations uh, based on other data of how fossil fuels are going to be in the crust. It has nothing to do with radiometric dating for the age of the Earth. Zero. How are they measuring the date of the, the Earth? Is it the coal 14 method through radi radioactivity? No, no it's, through, it's through the half-life of uranium. So looking at the half-life of uranium, they measure how much lead is in the Earth's crust, and they tell you that that tells you how old the Earth actually is. When the but assumption that, just, that they have that's a... That's just the hypothesis. It's, it's not to be it's hypothetical. Right. It's dumb because they're just making an assumption that there was 0% lead in the crust of the Earth and that the lead that we have came from uranium instead of them both so, being present in the Earth's crust at the same okay, time. Okay, Chris, help me out here. So if it is just... Uh, I'm not trying to trap you. I honestly don't know about this stuff. So if it's only about the age of... Or sorry, if, if it's only about the death, uh, the deaths of uh, our location or where, um, I don't know, oil might be or whatever, right? Uh, or whatever the fossil fuel industry is looking for, then why are they, with their own words, right? Why are they so accurate in finding it? Then why is there like a billion dollar industry depending on radiometric dating? Because but, again, radiometric dating can tell us things currently. It can't tell us anything in history because the assumption that they're making is that there was 0% lead in the Earth's crust and that it all came from uranium. That's the problem with the assumption that they're making. The reason that they can be so accurate with radio, it's not radiometric dating, but it's just radiometric data. We can look at the same data and come to two completely different conclusions based on the assumptions that we're making. And the fossil fuel industry is not making any assumptions about the age of the Earth. They're simply using the data that they have in order to predict where fossil fuels will be. Really? That's all. I thought geology and like the Earth layers Definitely, definitely has something to do with the age of the earth and where to look for and dig for. I, Again, I they will tell you that, but they're simply making an assumption. They're simply saying, this is the data that we have. This is what we think it means. Mm -hmm. And based on our own atheistic worldview nonsense, they don't have any actual data to tell them what it means. Science can never tell us what something means. It can only tell us what data is out there. Yeah, so, so I, what I they're doing is interpreting that data in a certain way to eliminate the God of the universe. Oh, yeah. So, again, like, naturalism and scientism, uh, scientism, positivism, it's all trash. So I totally, look, I think we can make very strong arguments as theists for, um, you know, stuff, 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 like, stuff like substance dualism or, uh, again, check out the debate between Alex Rosenberg and William A. Craig. Like, if, like... They have to give up so many things like truth, like truth, uh, meaning, value, identity, identity over time, like all, all the stuff they these scientists use, like all the assumptions, right? So I definitely agree with you there. So do you, but do you have a good paper? Um, so you seem very confident that what they're, what they're saying is trash, right? Even though they're, they're experts in the field, is there like some... I don't know, a YouTube video or like some type of content that you could refer me to? to sure, that's I'll find some okay. stuff. Are you on Discord? Uh, yeah, Dutch uh, David also. I'm, I'm in uh, Convolution, I'm not sure if you're there. I'm also in, um, do, do you know Jimmy Stevens? Yeah, I'm friends with Jimmy. Yeah, so maybe you can give it to him or um, uh, you can send it to me. So yeah, because I'm not sure if we are in, in the same... Um, same circles, but uh, yeah, but my name is Dutch David, and I have the same picture there. Maybe if you search me there, you will find a Dutch David with this picture. So that's me.
I need to drop a bomb. Well, if you, if you go to the toilet and do a number two, then you don't need to announce that to us, my friend. No, it's, it's a vocabulary bomb. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Holy Spirit said to me that I am Jesus. I am the son of Jesus. I have been constructed by thousands of fathers putting one sperm and four mothers into one egg. Wait, let me say this. I'm let me say this. That is the spirit of the Antichrist because uh, by definition, right, uh, if you go against specific doctrine uh, pertaining to Jesus Christ, then it must be of the enemy or your own flesh. It cannot be the Holy Spirit. No, I'm, I'm Jesus returned. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I so he's, guarantee, he's, like, ahead, more, like I absolutely guarantee you are not. But there are a whole bunch of you on Clubhouse. My evidence is together. have a conversation with you for five seconds. That is my evidence. My evidence is GPS 341 and 556. Use Wi-Fi there at that spot. Uh, and, unless it's like can't. the coordinates for hell, like that does not exist. But I so, guess he's, he's, so he is trolling or he is uh, deceived by, uh, by fallen No, angel, we've guess. run into him before. He's mentally ill. Oh, okay. Well, exactly, I'm mentally ill. Everybody says so. What would they say about Jesus if he came back back today? Just wondering. Well, every knee's gonna bow. Every tongue's gonna confess he's Lord. So there's that. That's that's what they'll Not say. Not the atheists. The atheistic psychiatrists. What would they say? Nope. They're gonna say it too. Everyone's gonna say it. Every means every. Even well, you. there there is need of proof. So, just wait. Three hundred forty-one and yeah, fifty-six. Uh, I use Wi-Fi there. Then you oh, find oh. out. Okay. I can't verify this. That's what we I'm saying care. because the father hasn't spoken to me about this. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun, but I think that's a little too blasphemy. So we'll just, uh, you know. Hang out in the audience and perhaps uh, repent and believe the gospel. But Nate, the Holy Spirit told him that stuff. Yeah, I'm not trying to get struck by lightning. Uh, hey, got... bag, Daddy, what's up? Yeah, I got a question. So this is perfect. Uh, perfect place for me to be asked a Christian. Uh, Unless you're about to say you're Jesus reincarnated, I'll say you're you're in a pretty good space to ask a question. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I'm not about definitely not about to say that, but uh, I was I was in a a room uh, yesterday, and they were talking about there was in in Matthew 27 there was two Jesuses, right? And so, can you expound on that? Uh, what Jesus, is the verse? Uh, Jesus Barbarus, and then uh, Jesus, you know, the the Christ, but it's in. Let me, let me, let me for Matthew 27, like 16 or 17. Let me pull it up. And this, and I just wanted to see, get a, a Christian, uh, this, what, what y'all think about it, or, that isn't, that just, interesting because because i'm i'm muslim as you know as y'all know y'all know me uh but this is it just i was just wondering why i never heard this before until until yesterday but it's I'm, i'll read matthew 27 it says now it was this from i'm gonna read from 15 to uh to 18 now it it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen. Which by... version is this, man? This uh, new international version. Okay. They not be. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. <laughs> so when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, "Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah?" <laughs> For he knew it was out of out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. 
And then uh, Barabbas means son of the father. So I just thought, because, you know, I'm, I'm Muslim. And so uh, the Quran doesn't really explain. It just says he wasn't crucified. It doesn't really spell out what happened. It said it appeared that way. And so I'm thinking, could could uh, the real Jesus have been released? And they had the wrong Jesus because it was two Jesuses. <laughs> so Barabbas, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, he was um, in custody for murder. Right, so that would well, negate him from being the Messiah, because um, that would have well, he, been a pretty he bad the, thing. No, but he was the the leader of uh, a group that was uprising against the. Yeah, yeah, and Roman. he like murdered someone, right? Was that correct? They, that was he was in jail for, but I don't yeah, know that's his correct. Group, his group did it, or he personally, but I know he was he was being charged with it because he was a part of that was you know like he was fighting. Yeah, and the guys like. Yeah, and the guy was shocked, right? Because he's like, hey, do you want Jesus who, you know, did nothing wrong? Or do you want Barabbas who's a murderer? And they're like, give us Barabbas! He's like, really? Which is kind of the same jaw drops that we see on a daily basis here. We're like, really? <laughs> no, but, but Barabbas was 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 also, was like, he was a criminal, according to the government, but he was like a freedom fighter, so to speak, for the people, though. Like Hamas, just freedom fighters. The the he was fighting against the government, so it doesn't make sense that the government will release somebody fighting against the government because okay. people. So 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 even if he was a, like a zealot and he had a similar name, right? So what you might want to do is check out the Greek, the origin of Greek, and also maybe a commentary on what that name meant word for word, or is it like confirmed that it meant like son of the father? The yeah, Barabbas means means son of the father. That's what Barabbas means. So Jesus. Yeah. So, the, yeah, so in Jesus well, well, yeah, well, well, yeah. To an, just to answer your question, like in short, no, there's no way that it was like a mistaken identity, and they're like, oh crap, we got the wrong Jesus, uh, because you know, like Mary, you know, after the crucifixion, everything, the disciples were there. Mary was there. She saw it. There, she was there crying over it. Um, so you know, Mary probably had a good idea who her son was. She's not going to no, be crying this, over the wrong no, guy. This is another thing that kind of that uh that somebody pointed out to me, right? And they were saying that their theory was that uh, was that this meant that Jesus left with Mary. But I think it's in... Uh, You're a Muslim, right? So you believe God pulled some switcheroo where um, maybe um, it, that person on the cross wasn't Jesus but looked like Jesus and had uh, his, mother, his own mother food. Wouldn't make that God a deceiver? I'm I'm just I'm just telling you what what the theory is, right? I'm not saying it's true or there's no, it's just a theory that that uh one I wouldn't even call him Muslim, but he brought the theory to me that that was his theory of what happened, right? But I would say I don't believe his theory. Yeah, I'm That's not saying you have to believe his theory. Yeah, I'm just saying the theory has no basis in reality or fact. Um, Barabbas. <laughs> so so. Yeshua was a very common name um, at in the first century. Um, it's still a common name. It's just Joshua. So, like, the idea that somehow uh, Barabbas went on the cross in place of Jesus is just, it's just nonsense. No, but uh, Luke, he, he, then he, he took, you know, uh, to Luke, trying to see what he was, he was pointing out. But he was saying, like, uh... When 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 Jesus is on the cross, and he tell he tells the the uh, the he tells Mary, this is your son, and then he tells uh, oh he tells the disciple, this is your mother. The the theory was that was Jesus standing right next to his mother. Yeah, again, that's just stupid. Because okay, so why would Barabbas say that? in order to cover for Jesus. Like, it just, it makes Allah a liar, which, I mean, Allah lies all kinds of times. But, Quran, but, so. but, but Barabbas was also, his name was also Jesus. But there was like 20,000 people <laughs> running around in Jerusalem that had the name Yeshua. Are you joking? Like, yeah, this, this is just struggling. dumb on the surface. Wait, it's the greatest conspiracy Wait, uh, in history, Steph. Chris. You're missing it. I heard Steph. No, and I do like, like a good... Oceans 11. 
Listen, Bag Daddy, who who do you think was crucified, uh, stabbed in the side, brought down into the tomb, and then was not in the tomb three days later? Who was that? That that that's a, a report. I'm not. I don't. I don't believe the Bible necessarily. I believe it's you oh. know it's somewhat true. So then, why are you quoting it? Why are you quoting the Bible? Wait, 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 wait. This is a theory. Wait, I'm just bringing it. Wait. Just okay, so. Something. If we're going to buy into this theory, which crucifixion account are we using? Are we using the biblical crucifixion account, or are we using another crucifixion account? No, but if if because the, the what makes this so like so interesting is let's say hypothetically, like let's just say that a Jesus was crucified, but it wasn't the Jesus that was the prophet. Still, okay. it would be it, when it when when the Bible is saying Jesus said this or this happened to Jesus, it happened to a Jesus either way. Okay, you know what really so makes wait. me mad about this? Oh, go ahead, serendipity. I was just gonna say, you know, this is what really. I went into a Christian room last week, and this guy that was telling this story was modded up in this Christian room in front of a room full of people telling this story about how. Jesus and Mary snuck off and didn't even watch the crucifixion. It's just gross. And now I'm here. And, and I was just like, I, I cannot believe in a Christian room, this guy is modded up telling this story about how Jesus and Mary slunk off and didn't even watch the crucifixion. Um, that, you know, he traded places with this guy and like I'm hearing it again, like this just boggles my brain. Well, well, serendipity. How was it cool man's room? How else would Jesus make it to North America and appear in front of Joseph Smith? Duh. That's yeah, a really true. good point. I guess what I'm trying to get to is like, okay, if you're going to buy into that theory, first of all, you have to figure out which crucifixion account you're using. And if you're using the biblical one, it just doesn't work. So then you, we'll dismiss that one. So then, like, there has to be another. So is there, like, an Islamic. It doesn't work in the biblical account because there was a man who was stabbed in the side. Water came down. He was recognized by those who followed him. His body was removed from the cross. We have multiple accounts of this. So the best you can do with the biblical account is say that the man who was crucified, pierced, brought down, and then disappeared from the tomb later, who was guarded by Roman soldiers and the stone was moved away. This man was not Jesus Christ, right? No, That's the best you can do with that. So you, you'd have to come up with, so then you have to dismiss the biblical account. So the next question is, which the heck story are you basing this on? No, but it just in, in, I'm just telling you the theory, right? And so John, in John 19, 27. So hold on again. I'm just going to stop you there real quick. Because you can't use the Bible to support this because the you, you're trying to make the documents do something they don't do. I'm not trying to make it do anything. I'm just. Well, no. But so so your next defense has to come from outside of the Bible. You no, can't quote saying, John I'm not, because I'm not you've already saying, dismissed the biblical I account. I agree with anything. I'm just saying it's interesting. It's just, not interesting. It's, it's like, silly. You can't quote John to refute John. Like, you, this is. No. No, this doesn't no, make any sense. No, I'm, I'm saying, like, because the Quran says, it says, it appeared that way. So I am trying to oh, Okay, it. so let's look at the but Quran account of the crucifixion and talk about whether or not that's viable at all. The crucifixion. There's just the Quran says they killed him, not nor did they crucify him, but it appeared that way. That's all that the Quran says about it. It appeared that way, but it didn't happen. So, if it appeared that so wait, so what you're trying to do is submit, make the biblical text submit to the Quranic text? Is that what? But so no, all I'm saying is, so so Muslims are like, what really happened then? That's the so it's it's just that's all this is. It's like it's not saying nothing's set in stone, nothing's definite. It's just just talking. I'm, I'm with just, you. Okay. So in order to give any validity to this argument, you will have to establish that the Quran's account of the crucifixion would be more historically reliable than the four canonized gospels. Yeah, it, it, yeah. That's that's our that's our belief. 
Right. So well, you that's have just to a stupid belief. That. But but yeah, I'm like, not talking. I'm just reading the Bible, trying to see what the, the, I'm trying to show you where the logic of someone that brought the theory to me that they're not even a hundred percent. They're just saying this is a possibility. This is just talking, just to talk. I'm right. Just, and we're just telling you that that possibility is not a possibility and that it's just made up fairy tale nonsense. And let no one who has three brain cells to rub together would believe that theory unless they're an ancient, um, like child molesting oh, goat go, herder, illiterate goat herder, a la Mohammed. So, so you don't believe in miracles, is what you're saying? No, I believe in miracles. I just believe Mohammed was a Satan worshiper who. Had, was led around by demons and is now burning in pig fat in hell. Yeah, so you don't believe it's possible that God can nope, do it? Nope, don't believe it's possible at all. Nope, because God can't lie. And so the fact that you are even in here talking but, about this nonsense and talking but, about this I, blasphemy I, I, is just, it's, I'm done with it. We're done, we're done, sir. Aren't we're done. God talking? So God has not, nothing to do with anything that you do. But God isn't saying anything in the Gospels. Of course he is. God wrote the Gospels. That's no. the problem. Is that demons wrote your book. God wrote our book. That's no, the bottom line. According to different different people. different. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm telling you objectively true, objective reality is that your book is written by a child molesting demon worshiper who was an illiterate goat herder. Our book was written by God. God so didn't write you on that. The gospels are written by this. is The gospel according to John. Right. Who was inspired and, by the Holy Spirit. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And he, he said, yeah. uh, he said okay. to her, but here is your son. And so the theory was Jesus was standing right There's next no to There's no theory. There's no theory. It's made up That's nonsense garbage. That is not a theory. Yeah, There's so no basically the, the logical conflict that you have within this argument, right? And let's dismiss the supernatural claims. I'm not going to get into whether Islam or Christianity is right, right? But you're utilizing a document to refute itself, which is not like you're saying that Muhammad, because you, you've got two accounts. You've got the account in the Quran that states that everyone thought Jesus, and this is what I'm putting together. Everyone thought Jesus was resurrected and rose from the dead, but he didn't. And it doesn't say how. So the Quran says that there was no actual, that Jesus didn't actually die at that time, right? And then you're trying to say, oh, well, even the Bible shows this is true. The problem that you have is that the Bible does not show that's true. And, and so you're trying to find verses that will corroborate what the Quran says. But you, the, the best you can do is read them out of context. And the be yeah, and so context. what we have, the problem you have is that you've got a writing by Muhammad if we take that as fact. Uh, so you've got a writing by one man who was openly against Christianity versus a couple hundred accounts of a crucifixion that match each other, right? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it so that Muhammad is the one who's right and the couple hundred accounts we have of the crucifixion of the people who recognize this man, Jesus Christ, there was a crowd there, right? So even if like there are plenty of written accounts, so even hold on. If hold on. One thing all of the written accounts establish, hold on, I'm not, I'm not listening to you while you interrupt, so just wait a second. So one of the things that these accounts all establish is that these men, these two men were crucified and Barabbas was set free in front of a crowd, right? This is yeah. not, they didn't just pull someone off of the street and make him an example for the Roman Empire. They took a man who they thought was a revolutionary dissident who was at risk of riling up the Jews enough to overthrow the Roman Empire, right? Like that was, well, that was ultimately Rome deferred to the Jews authority, right? So they, they saw this man as like a danger. They're not going to execute the wrong man. So no, then if you're trying to reconcile Muhammad, you have to make hundreds of people in on this conspiracy. You have to make all of these documents not correct. And then the four canonized gospels, you certainly can't use those because they establish this story. So what I'm saying is you're working really hard to make the, tr the, the account of one man a truth and you're dismissing the accounts of hundreds of others. And so that's the logical inconsistency. You can't pull out of John to prove that theory. You have to establish that Muhammad was more reliable than all of the others.
I'm, I'm not dismissing anybody's account because in the Quran is not dismissing their account because the Quran is saying it appeared to be that way. So we're saying if it appeared to be that way, if somebody say they saw something and, and, and it's saying it appeared to happen. So they can think they saw something they didn't see. So it, nobody's account is being dismissed as they didn't think they saw what they think they saw. Well, so that there is because dismissing Christ the account. No, just, like, no, hold on. Jesus was recognized by the people in the crowd. They had a choice of men and they said, which of these men do you want to free? And the, the, the Jews were like, not the one who's causing trouble. He's a blasphemer. These men, these Jews had been watching him in these towns and the surrounding areas. They knew who he was. They said, hey, aren't you the one from Nazareth? They said, hey, aren't you the one who raised Lazarus? The, this is not... The claim that this is a case of mistaken identity in front of hundreds of people who Jesus had been living around for three years is it puts an enormous burden on Mohammed to prove that that's the case, that hundreds of people just sort of mistakenly like, oops, wrong Joshua. Uh, that's not the guy who raised Lazarus. It, it, it's not even it's, it doesn't make any sense. But the the fact that his name was that was son of the father, <laughs> and then the fact that his name was the same oh, as twenty thousand other people in Jerusalem two, makes no hello, difference hello, whatsoever. Two, two makes no two, difference whatsoever. Two, Just please stop talking. That's such a dumb the argument. The least one, and you, you're telling me God can't do you know miracles. I'm telling you, God um, doesn't lie, and what the Quran says is that when, God when deceives God say, people. It was, says that God but, deceived people. No, so if God is deceiving that, people, what makes you think the Quran is true? Why can't he be deceiving you right now? Show me. He can the, be deceiving you right now. Where God says Jesus was crucified. Yeah. I mean, dude, just, just you can't. your argument is ridiculous. Um, Muhammad is a child well, hold on. molesting let me, goat. Let me her. answer that question, okay? How, why do we think that God said Jesus was crucified? Because unlike the Quran, the Bible is a compilation. I, I say this every time. Are you guys starting to memorize this yet? Because it comes out of my mouth like every day. The Bible is a compilation of documents that's histor so historically improbable, and it's alone right? There are no other documents that exist like the Bible in all of human history, right? There are no cave paintings that match these criteria. There are no, th there's been a lot of people who've been running around writing things, right? Nothing exists like the Bible. It's a compilation of documents that don't contradict each other. And that, that alone is like a statistical impossibility, right? There are people who speak different languages from different countries and different generations over a couple thousand years that a book was compiled that agrees with itself, like across cultures that had zero contact with one another, right? Via, via like generations and time. So you're trying to establish the account of one man against that. And even if we reject the religious part, even if we throw all supernatural claims to the side, no logical human being would take the account of one person over a document that exists like that. So why do we believe it's, it's that the Bible the, is reliable and written by God? Because it shouldn't exist. The Bible should not exist, period. The fact that it does points to something supernatural. The Quran cannot make the same claim, claim at all. But where, where does the Bible say, this is the truth from your Lord, this happened? It don't. So it wait, don't. Okay. yeah, go ahead. Like, <laughs> the Bible makes like swapping claims. Like, you know, Jesus is like, verily, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Verily, I say. Like, he makes these, these like sweeping swaths. So like Before the, the crucifixion. I am. Right, and like when Jesus like predicts his death, like he didn't say, hey, someone's going to, you know, appear to be crucified in my stead. He says, I'm going to be lifted up. I'm going to be put to death. And I am going to uh, be raised again. So, I mean, Jesus says this on the hills of saying, uh, you know, I tell you the truth. Verily, I say the truth. I tell you, like, if you want to look for the Bible and the people in the Bible, like making tr uh, claims like, you know, this tr uh, saying is trustworthy and true. Like, it's all in the Bible. I mean, read it and you'll see. Um, Bag Daddy, how long have you been a Muslim out of curiosity? Oh, I'm, all my life. Oh, I, based on his argument, I was thinking you're a bit newer to this, so I don't have an explanation then. 
Yeah, how yeah. are you? Are your parents Muslim? How did this happen yeah. to you? No, all my life, my parents Muslim. Yes, but are I you just, in America? Yeah, I'm, I'm in America. Yeah. Oh, okay. America's yeah, Amer- a lot of Muslims in America. Are you like nation of Islam or just like uh, Sunni no. Shiite? Yeah, Quran and Sunni. Quran and Sunni. Where so, are your parents from? They're from uh, America. Where are your grandparents from? Well, in different places. Well, I got some okay. grandparents from, yeah. From, Were your grandparents Muslim? Well, I have, well, no. My grandparents weren't Muslim. How did this happen to your parents? What do, what do you mean? I don't know. It's just strange. Like, how did they get converted? Did yeah. They, well, how how, how did Islam question. come into your family? My, my father, he became uh, he Muslim in college. And then uh, when when he met my mother, she converted. Uh, okay. My father, people are from are from Sudan though. That's where his people are from. But they but he they, he was Christian when he was younger. When he was like 13, 14, He became atheist, and then when he was like nineteen, twenty, he became Muslim. Okay, yeah. Thanks for sharing. That's just interesting. That gives, so you've grown up in this faith your whole life. Have you ever? Have you ever? doubted islam have you ever like spent you know your dad was an atheist for a while have you ever spent time sort of exploring other faiths or have you i mean yeah I, I, about... I, yeah i've looked into, into superior in every way so yeah i've looked into wait, everything would you like are your parents really like uh like serious followers of islam like really really yeah, serious yeah. about it yeah written well, books and all he teaches well, so that. you well so yeah. you couldn't really explore you'd have to do it secretly right otherwise i'd have to kill you i've looked into everything and it's like compared it and islam is the superior to every any ideology what you match it up against whether it's how do i know if i'm saying that because whether to ask a question whether there's judaism right right, right. yeah we get it superior superior to everything yeah everything else sucks but i don't know if you're saying that because you you believe that islam is superior or because you have to say that because I you'd be believe. put to death if you didn't say that. No, it is clear. You put them side by side. You can. T- but how do we know? You gotta. You gotta know. You gotta understand them. And put them side by side. But your parents would kill you if you didn't say that. So of course you have to say that. How how would they kill me? If they really follow Islam, they'd be like blasphemy to say that Islam was not superior. So you have to say that. Yeah. But how would they kill you? Kill yeah, yeah, the Quran gives many approved ways to kill someone yeah, who believes Islam. Who, for sure. Who to say who to say I wouldn't kill them? Like, come on, like that. Wow. Well, I mean, okay, I, that got dark. Um, well, that's, uh, that's uh, 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 out who to say I wouldn't win. Like, really? Uh, well, There's, no, no. I'm not. I'm not, it's not. I'm not talking about like you know who can kill you. I'm saying if they if they truly follow their religion and, and you commit shirk, well, then you know you have to die. Versus like in Christianity, no, like you know uh, it happens all the time. Like if. If a Christian was like, "Hey, I'm not a Christian anymore. You know, I'm I'm an atheist." Well, you know, the the parents no, would probably commit, do something like, "Well, we'll pray for you, and we hope you repent and come back." No, if you commit treason, it's it's not it's not it's not that not simple. Shirk, shirk, it's blasphemy. No, leaving leaving the religion, but leave like in the, in the Quran when it talks about when it talks about uh, killing someone for leaving, it's talking about killing someone for leaving to a group you're at war with. But it says if they leave to a group that you're not at war with, then don't they, they you can't harm them so it's like it's it was a Ooh, it's talking about reason it's not talking about it's not that. talking about uh apostasy it's talking about treason i have a question about the claim that islam is superior um so in the conversation that we just had right where we established that there are a couple hundred accounts of the crucifixion and four were canonized as being pretty reliably inspired by god in the christian worldview versus the account of one man hundreds of years later in what way do you find muhammad's account superior to the gospel accounts it's not muhammad's account but okay so i'm leaving the supernatural claims at the door because you said islam is superior in an impartial investigation you're claiming that you made an impartial investigation right so how is the account of one man superior to the account of many of one man so so are you claiming now that it's the it's account revel- of allah it, it, no it was revealed to him what really happened it's not he didn't see it so it's not an account of his but what you have in your hand is a document written by one man 
versus what's on your shelf, which is a document written by 60 men. No, right. Wherever, so how of what see the Quran says this is the truth from your Lord. Like this is it was this is what was told to him by God. This okay, ain't, I'm account. with you, but you made the you made the claim that it's superior. How how is it superior? Because, how is Muhammad's account superior? Because the knower of all revealed it. It's like it's not his account. He don't got no dog in the in the fight. He didn't he didn't do he wasn't there. It happened before him, but this is what God told him happened. Okay, okay. So you're you're then you didn't you were incapable of doing an impartial investigation, is what you're saying. No, I'm, what, what I'm saying is he he had no reason to say this didn't happen. Matter of fact, he would have had more friends if he would have said it did happen. Okay. But, told him it didn't happen he had, he had to say what god told him i understand i'm familiar with the uh, with the islamic claims about allah's superior superiority to yahweh right i get that but the claim that you made is that objectively after an unbiased investigation you found islam to be superior and i'm trying to walk you into explaining to me what metrics you used to discern that well just uh I mean, I could go into it, but that was that would take us to like uh, some serious like debate, some religion. I know a lot of y'all would get angry and upset. It'd get very disrespectful here. Oh, so I don't get angry or upset too easy. By the way, uh, Saw Bahaki four five four four yeah. five five. I don't know what you think of the hadiths, but the prophet said, "Kill whoever changes religion." I don't, I don't know how much that's up for interpretation, but I mean, it seems pretty black and white. I, actually, actually real, real quick, Baghdadi, because I hear this claim a lot from Muslims. Like, I studied all the religions, and Islam just seemed to make the most sense. It was better than all the other ones. So if we're going into an in-depth study, out of, like, I'll give, I'll give you three major ones. I'll give you Hinduism, I'll give you Christianity, and I'll give you Judaism. Can you name me the main core tenets of all three of those religions? The main core tenets are uh, no. Okay, so you didn't do in-depth study on the religions then, because you would have been able to tell me what the core foundations of those beliefs were had you actually done your quote-unquote research into all those religions, wouldn't you? No, I did, I, I know enough to know, no, nah, that's not true. Well, if you don't know even the core foundations of their doctrine, you clearly don't know enough. I don't, I don't need to learn the core foundations of a doctrine. So if you don't know the core foundations of a doctrine, you don't know a doctrine, period. So how are you going to say that Islam is superior to other doctrines when you don't know other doctrines, period? Uh, okay. Yeah, that, Daddy. You, I think that's exactly one, what I'm trying to. We were just lied to. Is that one, you, you oh, are you? So wait. The whole and, thing. And I'm gonna toss it right back to you. But Bobby is exact. This is exactly what I'm trying to point out. You you have failed to establish how Islam is superior to other faiths because you don't. You're um, you're rejecting other faiths out the out the gate. You're not able to no, do an if, impartial if analysis. One thing is false. The whole thing is. I don't need to understand. A hint is sufficient to the wise. Then why didn't you just say that instead of acting yeah, like you like did in depth study? You just lied yeah. to us, bro. Oh. You lied to us. <laughs> exactly. Does that count as takia, or were you just like, nah, it's not takia? Takia, I just straight up lied. Because of that hurts I, a little bit. I know Christianity makes Islam superior to Christianity. One thing I know about Buddhism or Hinduism or any other ism makes Islam superior. All I need to know is one thing that that's 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 uh, faulty, and I know. That it's inferior. I don't need to keep studying once I realize it's inferior. So if I just looked at Muhammad's moral actions in his life and looked at them as disgusting, I'm just like, you know what? I don't need to see more. It's already inferior to Christianity. Is that a good excuse to throw away Islam? No, to 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 say that that uh, Prophet Muhammad is immoral, you would also have to say that. Uh, that the, the prophets of the Bible were, were no, because the prophets of the, the, prophets of the Bible. Oh, wait, don't yeah, have, we would. The, pro the wait, prophets, the prophets of the Bible of, were immoral. Wait, hold up. The prophet, the prophets of the Bible <laughs> didn't have nine year olds drinking to come off their the according Bible. to their main books. So I mean, I don't think they're on the same moral high ground here. You, you would have to throw away the Bible, like and, I, and when Christians talk about Prophet Muhammad, they show that they don't understand Christianity or Judaism. No, when you guys talk about Prophet Muhammad, you don't understand that, guess what? Prophets can't be perfect people either. Prophets aren't just all perfect people, especially your Prophet Muhammad, who had a nine-year-old scraping cum off of his clothes. So can you explain how that's the moral high ground? Okay, but, but see, y'all don't know 
ages of like you don't know how old Bathsheba was when she had Solomon. So you you would think okay that's, that's the dumbest argument I've ever heard. She was already married, married her husband was off Jew. at battle. You don't know how old she was. <laughs> you don't know how old she was. See, uh, here's, here's the thing that amazes me about you Muslims. Every single time we bring up the age gap in between the pedophile Muhammad and then his child bride, all of a sudden you guys have to turn to our book and try to see, hey, rather than justifying the relationship that we have, let's see if you guys have the same one. Though? But Sheba was eight years old when she had Solomon. That was her second child. And her Where's second the proof child. for that? You can take what as long as you, you hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You can take as long as you that need was to walk us through how you get that conclusion. <laughs> yes, Go ahead. In the town move. Go ahead. Oh, oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Let me, wait, wait, wait. Let me help you. Let me help you. Okay. You're not talking about Bathsheba. You're talking about Isaac's wife. That's who you're trying well, to talk about. about you're trying to bring up Rebecca. Wrong. No, I'm talking that about is wrong. David's wife. You're, you're trying, trying to bring up Rebecca and you're doing it terribly. Just repent and believe, bro. Just, just repent and believe. Just move out of your house. Your parents don't murder you. And it's just sound crazy because y'all study. Let us help you. It's because you're so wrong. It's because you're so wrong. A hittable David's famous counselor was only eight years and eight months of age when her son Solomon was born. While some maintain that she was not older than six. Where's this, this from? Son 69B. Well, has anyone heard of a six year old giving birth? No. Is this yeah, like, I did it last okay. week. No, it's happened. It's happened. Yeah, I, I did it last week, actually, Steph. I'm doing so, it right now. I have never, wait. ever heard I'm, of I'm a sick. I identify house. as six, by the way. I can post I just, it in the, in, the, uh, in the chat. Please post it. I want to see it. Physically, it's it's asinine. The, it's like, com and it has links to their, to their, their books where this is written. So, I could, you just, you guys just are ignorant of the history. So, has you know. there been, wait, wait, has there ever been a woman in history who's hit puberty at the age of six? There's, there's been no, a maybe right now. Your medical condition. Huh? Because, because if they are not hitting puberty at the age of six, by medical definitions, it's impossible for them to conceive. The, the youngest woman in modern history to have a baby was five years old. Prove that. You could, like, you could Google this. Like, you got to just yeah, Google the youngest. Doing, I'm getting ready for my day. Could you Google that for me and, and show the me the five year The youngest woman in history to give birth is. He's talking about, he's, he's talking about this Peruvian woman. They bring this up all the time. Lena Medina is who he's talking about. What's okay. that? What is the story there? It, what horrible! It, it, it was it was in like it was in like the early thirties. It, like it was some it was some Peruvian woman who ended up giving birth at like five years, seven months, and something like that. Oh, she's a baby. She's a baby, and she had a baby. So yeah. there's been one and account like, of this, and no, like a, a nine year old gave birth in like 2022. And like, oh my gosh! Wait, and, oh, wait, 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 wait. and let's read this. Let's read this. Like that exact case that he brought up. Based on the medical assessments of her pregnancy, she was less than five years old when she became pregnant, which was due possibly to precocious puberty and probable rape as she was under the age of consent in Peruvian law. So your brightest example of a woman getting pregnant at, un, at six or under is a woman that was most likely raped with a medical condition that advanced her puberty. But also she's a little girl. This is not a woman. So, you, so, you're, so, are you, so you're saying that... that uh... Women don't go through puberty at different ages, and that's, that wasn't happening then. Or they, that only Di happens... Different ages, like 12 or 13, is wildly different than, like, 5. And, no, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind I'm of convinced. Like I mean, eight. me and Chris are both 6. Like, can you, can you name right me now. any modern example of, like, an American public school child in kindergarten asking her teacher to go to the bathroom to get a pad? Let me see. If you just Google 8-year-old gives birth... I, 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 don't I am not Googling that. I, I, hold on. No one Googled that. No, no. I, 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 I use Google Bard me. And so I, 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 this is a girl, fascinating topic. Nine, I just didn't know about that. 2013, a nine-year-old girl. So, uh, Bad Daddy, I can, I can give the cases for girl. you. Bad Daddy, let me give the cases, USA okay? Today. Okay. So there was an eight-year-old in Peru in 2006, a nine-year-old in Brazil, a 10-year-old in Honduras, and a 10-year-old in Colombia. But all of these cases have been in the last 20 years. So these are actual documented cases. Okay, well, that's horrific. So now your claim is that... Um, that the, this the, is the, morally the, justifiable. We, yeah, right. 
So who are we talking it's about? Because we're talking about Rebecca. It's we're talking about who? But she. It's twenty twenty three. A girl is eight year old in Zimbabwe gave birth. Okay. So why are so, we talking about this? Yeah, so Bathsheba who, was not eight. So right. So so you're using this like crazy medical anomalous claim to say that this because this happened to a girl in Peru, it did happen to this woman, and so now we can establish her age because it happened to three other people in the past fifty years. Like what? I'm trying to figure out what you're saying. What I'm saying is, is I'm, I'm just showing you that it's clearly possible because you're asking. Who are we? Who's possible. the woman we're talking about and in the Old it's Testament? Reported to have happened. Are we talking about Bish Rebecca? Are we talking about Leah? Who Bishiba. are we talking about? I'm talking about Bathsheba. When Bishiba. she had Bathsheba. The, Solomon's so mother. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. So walk us from the beginning of that story and tell us how you arrived at. Go to the just the Jewish encyclopedia. Uh. Let me see. Let me read the part where it said, of course, and I can click. And let me see. It says Bathsheba, the granddaughter of, in rabbinical literature, Bathsheba, the granddaughter of Ahithophel, David's famous counselor, was only eight years and eight months of age when her son Solomon was born. While some maintain. Whoa, that she, what right, paragraph so is this in this that. article? This is, this what is paragraph yeah, is from this? The, Get, the son, show us the text. The this, son, you're reading a, us the Encyclopedia Britannica. So you're reading us a document that says some argue this and some argue this, but you are claiming this opinion. So, so show us where you found this opinion and where did you find it? Or you can go to the tab. No, 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 no. Go to the text. Go to the account of this and and show us how. Like make us agree with you using the account, not using Britannica. No, now, I, so, now this is the. So this, what he's using, what he's using is that there it, are some it, fringe it, rabbis that are not discussed who they are or what the source is, but just in quote unquote rabbinical literature, there is a claim that Bathsheba was eight, but the biblical literature doesn't support this. Um, and so there's they're just giving a general, yeah, there's all kinds of nonsense out there like, that says like, go, like right. people were raising golems out of mud and murdering their neighbors. I mean, like, this is just all a bunch of nonsense. It's not in the scripture. We don't ex accept these it as are, any type of historical document. These um, are Jewish reports. This is what the information. This is not a report. One? Okay, listen. This is not a report, sir. Hold this on. This is Back made up nonsense find, fairy tales. Find a Jewish report that this article cites Germanic. and read it to us. Right. So did, this article that he's actually report. talking about, Steph, is from Jewish Encyclopedia. He posted the link to his okay. credit. Um, but what it just says is, quote unquote, in rabbinical literature. It doesn't say where. It doesn't say in the Talmud. It just says, quote unquote, rabbinical literature. Yes. We don't so what know I'm what that means. What I'm asking him to do is find the literature that states Oh, yeah. It. yeah um, he doesn't have... That no one has any links to it. It doesn't I, exist. I posted it's it's just a... You posted... Um, I posted like, the Sanhedrin 69B. This is uh, sa safaria.org. Okay, wait. The Sanhedrin 69B. Can you read that to us? What does it say? I have it, it in front of me. It says, okay, go Ra ahead. Rabbi Yermia of, J of Jipsi explains how this Mishnah demonstrates that one follows the majority, even in cases of capital law. Why is a man who engaged in intercourse with a three-year-old girl who was married to another man liable to receive the death penalty? Say that perhaps it will turn out that she is a sexually underdeveloped woman who is incapable of bearing children, and her husband did not betroth her with this understanding, and consequently the marriage is null, as it was entered into an error. Therefore, a man who engaged in intercourse with her should not be liable to receive the death penalty for adultery. Rather, it is not that we say that one follows the majority and the majority of women are not... Um, rather, it is not that we say that one follows the majority and the majority of women are not sexually underdeveloped women. And therefore, the assumption is that the betrothal was valid. This is proof that even in cases of capital law, one follows the majority. The Jamara refutes this claim. No, rather, what is that meaning of that which is taught in the Mishnah? And if she is married, and a man, a, uh, a man other than her husband is liable for engaging in intercourse with her due to violation of the prohibition against intercourse with a married woman. This means that if a man unwittingly engages in intercourse with a three-year-old girl who is married to another man, he is liable to bring a sin offering. But there is no liability to receive the death penalty based off majority. The Gemara okay. asks, but wasn't it taught in the Mishnah, and if any one of those with whom relations are forbidden, which are enumerated in the Torah, 
engaged in intercourse with her, the man is executed by the court for engaging in intercourse with her. The Gemara answers, this is referring to a case where her father or some other close relative engaged in intercourse with her so that the prohibition is incest rather than adultery. The Gemara asks, but wasn't it taught if any of those whom, with whom her relations are forbidden engage in intercourse with her? The man is executed by the court for engaging in intercourse with her. This seems to in indicate that the death penalty is imposed for all types of forbidden intercourse with a three-year-old girl, even if the intercourse is forbidden as a result of her being married. The Gemara refutes this claim. Rather, what are we dealing with here? With, with a case where the husband explicitly accepted her upon himself as his wife, even if she turns out to be a sexually underdeveloped woman, therefore, another man who engages in intercourse with her is liable to receive the death penalty, even if he is not one of her close relatives. The okay, so hold just... on, hold on there. Beg Daddy, that's it did, what it, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's what it says. Um, now, my next question for you is, according to the biblical accounts, the canonized gospels, what was Christ's opinion of the Sanhedrin? I don't, I don't, I don't know. This is, this is the high okay. This right. is an important point, right? What was Christ's opinion of the men who were writing and following these regulations? Bad. Say bad. Say bad. Later in two years after absence. The, the, the point I'm, I'm making is. No, I want you to think about this. Okay, this everything that Bubby meant. just read, that's what you're citing. Did Christians accept that as rules and regulations they should follow? I'm, I'm not focusing on the rules. I'm you... focusing on the age of, okay. it goes down to tell the age of, uh, of Bathsheba when she, when she had Solomon. That's what I'm focusing on. The... So did Christ see those writings as valid and worthwhile? It's... It, it, or did Christ reject those? So it, again, you're back to the same matter. problem. Hold on. Regardless. You're back to the same problem where you are taking the word of one man in history hundreds of years later saying, aha, look here, when we have the claim that our God came down and overturned and trashed this stuff. These documents didn't make it into biblical canon for either the Jews or like not even the Catholics, like none of it. So because Christ came to destroy this. So you can't use this as any kind of example for anything because it was rejected in year 30 of our religion. You, you and you're asking us to take the claim of a man 600 years later. You're, you're rejecting the of somebody that's, that still happened. You can't reject her age. No, okay, I'm telling okay, you. saying it I didn't happen. Yes, it didn't. Okay, how can I put this in? Okay, let's say that two tweets come out right now, right? And one says, um, President Joe Biden uh, uh, just died. And the other tweet says, President Joe Biden is scheduled to speak in, in Zimbabwe today, right? You have two tweets that say two opposite things. And so let's say that uh, tomorrow a news report comes out that he didn't die. He spoke in Zimbabwe. And you're making the argument, no, he totally died. And they're like, no, he's standing right there. And you're like, nope, he died. Like, that's that's what you're doing. Christ came and said, that tweet never happened. That's not a thing. We don't like, we're, we're trashing that. I'm literally going to die to put an end to this, right? And you're going, no, Joe Biden's totally dead. The, so the, when, I, when I can't Christ, even make an analogy accurate. It's just Christ going to die. Years old. No, it's. It's ironic what Seth's saying because Seth, um, the wide receiver for Denver Broncos court went sudden. It was all over the internet. He died on Saturday, and then like he played in the game on Sunday. So yeah, so did he die or did he not die? You have to make the choice. And Baghdadi is pro is is choosing to believe that that dude's dead, even though we just saw him. Like you can't. This evidence you're bringing us is not evidence because it was rejected by the same people that you're trying to say did it right. Like. You, I can't, yeah. I don't know how to, uh -huh. I can't say it so, any clearer. So you're saying she was 18 based on nothing. And this is his story. Well, that's she was 18. She, she could have been 30. We're saying she was not eight. The, uh, the, so, so Baghdadi, I actually the followed the link in Baghdadi. Hold on, hold on. I actually followed the link where the rabbis are trying to um, lay down this calculation. And they're so wildly wrong. It's laughable. And so the other rabbis are literally laughing at them in this passage in the Talmud that they would come up with such a, a ri ridiculous um, idea of Bathsheba being eight. 
It's they just bad like calculation. Again. <clears throat> yeah. And so the other rabbis are literally ridiculing these other rabbis for saying that they were looking through the biblical text and coming up with dates to make Bathsheba that young. And they were the other rabbis in the passage, if you go and read the whole thing in context, are saying that this is a silly idea. No one believed that Bathsheba was eight years old. No one. Well, you find a report that she wasn't eight. I don't see no report. Uh, it's right here. Eight. It's literally right here. I will post it. You just have to read the entire thing in context, not just pick out a tiny passage from muslimswin.org. No, this is encyclopedia.com. <laughs> encyclopedia. <laughs> You're, what you're not what you're not saying this is what oh my gosh this is like the like where does jesus say he's god everywhere it's like one of those arguments it's like uh, you need something that explicitly says she was not eight while what chris just said is the people who, the reason you know she was not eight is because of the plethora of people arguing that she was not eight so it's like it, they're not they're not explicitly saying like you know she was not eight you have a plethora of people laughing and mocking at the people who were saying she was eight. So it's like it's like right there. They're saying she was not eight, except a, you don't accept it because it doesn't father, say the words she is not eight, even father, though all the people who are mocking and ridiculing like the two people who are saying she's eight, what do you think they're mocking them and making fun of them for? Because they agree? Of course they don't agree. That's like why you also can't say that Jesus is God over and over because you want him to say great. in perfect Swahili or whatever that I am God, I am God, when he says it in every other way possible. No, they said three generations were born in 24 years and that each and every parent begot a child at the age of eight. Oh, gosh. So now and everyone in the Bible is all. eight. Everyone in the Bible so, so, okay, so is like, eight years old. So freaking preschoolers in the Bible are just hooking up and spitting out babies. <laughs> Solomon's grandfather was 26 when he was born. He he was born at 26. No, he his grandfather was 26 years old when he was born. Oh, kill me! Where are you getting these dates? I'm reading the this. devil. Yeah, the devil. I know. <laughs> like, look, this is not accepted. Like, okay, again, you are taking, you're coming to this with the presupposition <laughs> that one man, Muhammad, was correct. And so then you're going, aha, because he was correct, I need to make all of these other documents fit that. No, right? This, you're not, this not, isn't we're evidence. We're not talking like, about Quran. This is not from Muslim sources. I'm not, like, I'm not like y'all. I don't go get no, anti-Jewish no. sources to read Jewish literature. I'm reading it on Jewish websites. Right, Jewish but where did you get the link to get there? Because you're not sitting around all day reading the Talmud all the way to 69. Um, it's like that's not, just stupid. Is that not, you're you're lying and you're you're getting these the verses Sanhedrin. from the Talmud. <laughs> you're lying and you're getting these verses from the Talmud um, from some Muslim apologist site to try no, to not. to try to instantiate no, the fact not. that that There's the no, child molesting goat herder no illiterate Muslim, that you guys no worship as Muhammad. This argument. There are no Muslim sites focusing on. There the, are. I can give they, you sites that make this one. argument. Find one Muslim yeah, website. Yeah, and Orthodox Judaism also doesn't make this argument. Like, no, apparently a couple dudes nobody's are, and, like, everyone else is really against them. Like, do, nope. oh, my goodness. Like, Nobody, do you think we disagree with the they, Jewish people a little bit about, like, the whole murdering Christ, he's boiling in feces, and, like, spit on Christians? Like, do you think Christians maybe, like, think the Jewish people got a couple things wrong? Like, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> But I, there, there are, there are no. Can, can you just go back and just say your Jesus? Can, you just, can we bring that other guy back? I changed my mind. That was less bad than this. Right. This is just from Jewish literature, straight from Jewish literature. Okay. But so you said it was from the Talmud the thirty minutes ago. You said it was from the Talmud. Turns That's out it's actually not. Is. It's exactly. a big discussion they're having. Who it is? The Talmud. Daddy, listen. If Jewish you're going to engage in scholarly analysis you, because right now what you're doing is you're making an appeal to history because remember this conversation started because I was asking you to establish why you thought that Islam was superior to all other religions and then you went back to well let's let's say it's superior no, just, to bring up I no, no 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 hold on that's where the conversation started you're trying to establish that Islam is superior to Christianity but you're not you're not studying any documents in a scholarly manner like no 
these documents you're pulling up, no, no one takes them seriously. Again, you're you're arguing that the football player is dead because you saw it on a tweet, but he's right there playing the game tonight, right? No. Like this Orthodox is not. You cannot this make this serious. argument because history doesn't work Orthodox this way. Jews take this very serious. I'm sorry, you'll have to start over because I can't listen to you while you're interrupting me. What did you say? I said Orthodox Jews take this very seriously. What Orthodox Jews take this scholarly writing very seriously? They, they take all of their this their uh Talmud very seriously. I'm okay. So Orthodox Jews. So again, you would have to take that up with Orthodox the Jews Gemara, to hold to that. Yeah. Hold on. All the, you would the have to take that up with the very few Orthodox. I will grant you this. OK, take that up with the Orthodox Jews who hold to that. What you are talking to is a room of people who believe that one Jewish man named Jesus Christ came and overturned all of this. You're making an argument that's completely like, yes, well, he overturned history. What? He overturned history. He, oh, he said these are not reliable sources. We don't listen to them. I'm not going to put words in Christ's mouth, right? But Christ did not Except hold. You mean Barabbas' mouth and Barabbas' mouth. You don't want to put words All in right. Mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing that Bubby just read is exactly the thing that Christ came to undo and correct. This was yeah. not God's <laughs> law. This was the corruption of man, okay? So in our belief system, this is not valid evidence. This is the thing that our belief system says, yes, this was very incorrect. So a scholar would say, oh, okay, Earl, the early church and Christianity and Jews, Messianic Jews, none of them hold to this. So you're going to have to adjust your, like, you can't study the way you're studying. You're not bringing any kind of logical or consistent arguments. You okay, still okay. have to establish why the account of Muhammad is more reliable than no, the so, account of why, hundreds you, of people in the in the biblical text. But why do you feel like this is any different than hadith? I don't know about hadith. I believe that all of it is nonsense. Fine, yeah, all of it's nonsense. No, but I'm going to say this: you'll go to a hadith, a historical report, and say Muhammad did this. But I go to Muslims utilize the hadith to interpret. Look, no, but I go to and, and Jews use their reports to interpret too. No, but so no, the, the Jews report. do not consider this to be. This is not the same type of thing as a hadith, right? It, this is it, not. It, that's a false equivocation. No, it's the same thing as a hadith. No, a, it is not. Do you understand oh what the Talmud that, is? It's a different religion, bro. It's a like. Why don't you just say we should follow the Muslim hadiths because it's it's the same thing? No, it's a different religion. Like, oh, this is so painful. And you did say one thing, which at this point, I'm just gonna say. It's it's not intentional and it's not takia because I, I just don't think we're playing with a full deck here. So I'm going to give you some grace and say you're not intentionally doing it. But you keep doing things that if someone had intent, it would be takia. It would be deceptive. Um, but I don't think you are able to do it intentionally. But you said something. You said that um, it's important to Orthodox Jewish people. Yes, we all agree this subject is very important to them. But you were using that to say that basically – that's why they agree in this. So I don't know if you did that intentionally or not. I'm going to say not. But yes, it Agreed is important. What? We all agree. No, it, because what, what it isn't the, the ages of the chick. Uh, but what, what, because it isn't. What I'm, saying. I'm, going to finish, I'm going to finish my sentence. But because it is important to them does in no way mean they all agree. There is much discussion and fighting about this stuff. So yes, important. No, they don't all agree. Didn't say they all agreed, but they, but there, there's no report that they say anything other. What? There is yes, in the is. same passage that I just oh read. God. Are you serious right now? No, Wait, I'm look I'm here, dude. Here's right. the thing. Here's the thing that you don't understand. The reason that Jews there are all kinds. Of, yeah. So the reason there are all kinds of discussions in the Talmud is the Talmud, from what I understand, not being an expert, but from what I understand from my rabbinic friends is that the Talmud is a collection of discussions back and forth between generations of rabbis um, that will agree and disagree with each other. And so it is simply a preservation of all of these things. Now, also, you have to understand, the Talmud wasn't even written down until around the time of Muhammad, or in, around the 600s, the Babylonian Talmud. So we don't take anything in the Talmud to have any historical value whatsoever um, that that predates its actual writing. What we do 
have is that the Talmud itself, uh, you know, will have uh, historical value past the 600s. Okay, but we don't take as That's we don't take any really of this true. as history, and the and the arguments you can follow along with the arguments of the rabbis that are claiming that Bathsheba was eight years old, uh, and and they're just it's just dumb. Like I I mean I can't see how anybody would take any of these arguments seriously. No, okay. but what you said was not not really true. Yes, it was all compiled and brought together at that time, but these but the writings existed the time of Christ and before. They just wasn't all put together the way it is now. This is partially true. What you're saying is partially true. It got lost in the fire around, I can't remember, 70 AD or so. But we don't know if it was the writings from, you know, the time period Chris mentioned it being writing. We do not know. If you're saying there were some writings at that time, you're correct, but they were lost. So that's all we know about that. This, This is what was passed down. That's that's what we do know. It's passed down all the way from the verbally, time, you and know, perhaps verbally, verbally, perhaps. and it was some writings. Yes, it was. Except again, right. what was passed down? You're trying to say the chick was eight is passed down, and even in your own source, no, that is not what was passed down. Much disagreement and argumentation was passed down. Well, yeah, some say she's six, and some say she's eight. That's the disagreement. No, the oh disagreement. Is, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this is just this is insane. I, I, like, look, there is no world in which you are going to be able to justify the rape of Aisha over and over and over again. Muhammad was a wicked, Satan worshiping, child molesting, homosexual goat murderer. Then, then okay. what? He was also he was also yeah he was also a gay guy right so he was ridden like so, a camel so, according so to one David, of the so David was a child molester according to your beliefs then no <laughs> oh my gosh no 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 one so, so, no but, one thinks that you are just you okay Nate seriously are we gonna keep going with this this is like I, y'all y'all attack Prophet Muhammad because y'all don't understand your own history I haven't said one word about the Prophet pieces be upon him. I don't think I've said one word about him today. No, but the the, the guy who is attacking Prophet Muhammad is because he doesn't understand his own his, his own prophets. Oh, I understand my own prophets, and I understand Muhammad very well. And he was an illiterate, goat herding, child molesting warlord murderer. And and who, you believe that because of who, the, history, the historical? No, right. it's because he. No, it's because of your own claims by your own prophet. And your own people. These are like, the claims of Jewish people about Jewish prophets. No, th- this is not. This is the claims of a couple of rabbis that were disagreeing <sighs> with the majority. Again, you no, don't they, know what you're talking about. Why don't you go bark up the tree with a rabbi and you tell him wh- how Muhammad was righteous so, so you for believe raping a nine-year-old, about um, Muhammad, and then uh, and you tell him how Bathsheba yes. and David was, you know, some type yeah. of weird. Thing too, you go right ahead. Got you, got you. You don't, you don't accept it because it's not in. The, but you, you'll go to historical writings yeah, about it. I, but you don't again. Historical I, I don't. About well, it. look, I think that all historical writings by Muslims are nonsense. I think that they're all a bunch of garbage. Um, you know, but I, but if Muslims insist on taking them seriously, then I can quote those yeah, sources. And, and Orthodox Jews and rabbinical Orthodox Jews. Jews you, again, you don't understand anything about Orthodox Judaism, so please stop saying that you do. Orthodox Jews have discussions and disagree with each other in the Talmud. And so for you to continue to sit up here and slander Orthodox Jews no, as if they agree about. with you that raping nine-year-olds yeah, is say, fine, it's just a slander and it's just a bunch of copium. No, so what you should do is put the crack pipe down— they, she was between Put the crack eight, pipe eight, down, eight, and they say she was yeah. between the age of six and eight. That's what yeah. they disagree. Put That's the what crack they... pipe down and go get some <laughs> yeah, help. The disagreement whether she was six years old. Or okay, eight. wait, wait, wait. Hang on. For the record, for the record. So, are you saying that every adherent Orthodox Jew either thinks one of two things: Bathsheba was six or eight? Is that That's your claim? 
that and any then, serious Orthodox Jew yeah, that's all the that was either eight or literature. six. That's all that we have in this literature. Okay, <laughs> great. So let's let's ask an Orthodox okay, Jew. So, so I, I, I so I, I actually um, I, I messaged my my Orthodox rabbi friend who's living in Israel. Um, he usually answers quicker, but the last time I messaged him, he uh, he asked for a little break. Um, told him maybe told him that maybe you know take a little time because they were currently bombing the mu mummy dust <laughs> out of Gaza. So he asked for a little time to respond. But anyways, when I asked him this question about uh, what he thought of um, Ray, uh, Rebecca, um, he's like, no, it's nonsense. He's like, there's like three people that make that case. And like every other rabbi like argues vociferously against them because it's all nonsense. So I imagine he's going to have the same sort of answer for this one. But, you know, if they can take time from bombing the mummy dust to answer this question, um, I'll let you know what he says. Maybe, I'm telling maybe you, Steph be can get some new answer. paint when they get done with Gaza. Oh my gosh! Yes. Let's let's get Steph some new brown paint um, when they get done bombing Gaza. That'll be great. <laughs> one one thing I want to know, Nate and Chris, has this has uh, Big Daddy ever played telephone in school? That game where you all line up in a row and the teacher gives the person at the one end of the row. Uh, a message and it has to go whisper through the ears of all the kids to the very end of the row and then um, what's at the end, you, you listen to what it's, what it's at the end and then the teacher says what she actually said and it's two different things how do we know that didn't happen from, from, from what this guy's saying that most of it came from word of mouth and only just a few little writings, I mean you've heard fish stories before the fish gets bigger and bigger each time you tell the story right so i mean i'm i'm sorry to say but that's not substantial evidence that just because it came from word of mouth whoever it came from that this is even plausible yeah yeah but uh what was the irony I'm 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 really just reading what the, what this says, and and there are, there are Muslims that dispute you know uh, the Aisha's age, but it's still reported that she was that she was either six or seven when they married, and she was nine or ten when they consummated. Most say nine, right? But there are some reports that say she was sixteen, but it's just less reliable reports. <laughs> so there, there it, it's like of course it's gonna be people gonna debate about the history right it's it's the history but it's still it's we have something to go on that's written recorded history so you can't you can't deny the written recorded history because i just don't believe that i just don't believe that it's not enough to deny it. you're not Qu listening you're not listening please repeat after me if you were listening okay the talmud's purpose is not to record history now can you can you please repeat that? Is what I just said is what the Talmud will tell you itself. The Talmud's purpose is not to record history. Can you repeat what the I just said? The Talmud's purpose is to is to legislate. Is le legislate. Okay, can you can you repeat what I just said so that I can make sure history. that you heard what I said? It's what did I just say? What did I just say? It, it's rulings based. What on did I just say? I'm, 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 Do you have any idea what I just said? Do you have any I idea what, what I just said? said? Okay, you heard what I said, yeah, so please repeat so now it. I'm responding to what you said. No, no, no. Go ahead and repeat what I just said. My no, request is that you repeat what, what I just said. 